Okay, uh, so this is our project, uh, Cybersecurity for Physicurity, or SIFU. Uh, so this is work at the University of Bristol uh, with myself, uh, Joe Gardner, along with Sharad Agarwal, Oasis Sheed, and Barney Craggs. Uh, we also have Louise here today, who's our group manager as well. So this project is a uh, first look into the issue of security on smart farming. Uh, so increasingly, farms are becoming smart uh, for use of things like IoT, uh, both for uh, tracking uh, purposes, but also paddock things like milking robots and so on on dairy farms. Uh, this is increasingly being used. Uh, certainly, we've seen some farms have milking machines for the last 10 years and more are looking to it uh, or similar type of technology. And this project is starting to study the impact of malicious actors and vulnerabilities on the nation's food supply uh, that come from the adoption of agri-tech. Uh, so the two main goals here, we're going to investigate vulnerabilities and their impact of the types of devices and software and services that sit inside the smart farms. Um, and we're going to use that to write some uh, policy guidelines and analysis frameworks for analysing the risk on farms and guiding uh, farmers and those involved in the agri-tech sector into how to help uh, reduce and mitigate the risks associated with the sensor-driven smart farming. So I talk about the smart farming um, and the sort of devices we're considering. Uh, it's these sort of things here. So these are examples of devices uh, for different manufacturers uh, of that we could be looking at here. Uh, so one of the big ones, and the biggest ones, is the robotic milk machines. Um, this is very much focused on the dairy farming, this project. Uh, so the milk machines, uh, a cow can walk into these by themselves. Uh, they get a bit of food, they're milked automatically. Uh, the system knows how much the cow needs to be milked uh, and test the milk, and then the cows can walk off and they can do this multiple times a day. So there's two different machines on the picture uh, from Gear and um, Astronaut. Uh, there's also uh, herd management systems, so things like uh, gates control systems. Uh, so these uh, cows have collars on them and the gates can direct cows around the farm uh, based on reading the tag values uh, to say direct them to the milk machine or stop them being milked if they've been milked too much, uh, direct them to feeding systems and so on. Uh, we have the cow tracking wearables. So these are essentially Fitbits for cows. Um, so we have two different collars there. We also have the uh, ankle bracelets as well. And these are also the functions. One is identifying the cow through RFID for the things like the gates and the milk machines, but also they can read information from the cows, uh, things like uh, how much they've eaten, uh, how much they're moving about and lying down, if they're in heat and so on. Uh, so if they're breeding cows, for example, they know exactly when's the best time to do that. Uh, we then have the barn uh, weather protection and feeding systems. Uh, so, for example, that's at the agri epicenter uh, down in Somerset. Uh, these are big curtains that can come down and block off the side of the barn uh, to keep the temperature inside the right level, protect against rain and so on. Uh, and these link into uh, these weather stations, IoT weather stations that have things like rain sensors, wind sensors and so on, which feed into those, usually through the cloud, uh, to control those sort of systems. Um, we have the camera system, so cameras for tracking. Uh, the cows are in the barn. And we also have uh, most of these things that involve in some way uh, the cloud and smartphone apps that connect up to them. So you can use a smartphone app to connect to the cloud and get data about how the cows are doing. Uh, just see what that looks like in a real farm. Uh, this is the agri epicenter uh, down in Somerset where we visited that showered on the right there. And you see here we have three milking machines over here. Um, these are sorting gates. And the cows can move right here and be either let into the milking area or not. Um, and you can see just on the cow down here, these are one of the collars uh, that they're wearing as well. So how are we doing this project? So there's two approaches are taking. One is to actually build a test bed of these devices and go and start analyzing them for vulnerabilities. So we'll look at them, look at the infrastructure around them and start trying to break them in different ways. Um, mainly focused around at the moment, the cow sorting gates and the collars uh, type systems. Um, once we find the vulnerabilities, uh, we can use that to guide and look at the whole system, see where the, the ways into this are and what the outcomes could be. And then we're also talking to uh, dairy farmers as well, uh, both farmers that have some smart farming equipment as farmers that don't have smart farming equipment uh, and seeing what their views on the risks are and the equipment and how they consider security in that. Uh, it's better for impact of this is we're hoping to find some vulnerabilities. Um, we're pretty much expecting to because speaking to vendors, uh, we know there's going to be some issues in some devices already. Um, and if we find vulnerabilities, we will disclose those to the vendors uh, with responsible disclosure and let them try and identify the vulnerabilities and fix them. Uh, and by interviewing the farmers as well, uh, we can learn what their perceptions of the risk is and then be able to write a uh, detailed policy and guidance to the farmers to identify uh, you have this equipment, this is what could happen to your farm if these attacks could happen. Um, 
the key outcomes of this, we're going to build a smart dairy farming test bed. Uh, the first vendors equipment should be coming in the next two weeks or so. Uh, so we'll have a full scale, well, small scale, but fully realized farm system uh, inside the lab on a tabletop, where we can go and attack the system from different angles and look for the vulnerabilities and the impacts. Um, and we're also going to produce a policy briefing um, to be shared with stakeholders, including manufacturers, the government and farmers' bodies, and also some papers as well for the academic community. So some of the major findings we have to date, um, there's very much a lack of understanding and awareness about security in the agri-tech sector. So the farmers don't really understand what the issues are. Uh, they have the equipment, they use it. The farmers very much have a trust relationship with their suppliers. Um, they've got their products and their security. Uh, the farmers don't usually get very involved in actually setting this up. You have the supplier, they have engineers who come and install the stuff on the farm, they'll maintain it, uh, they'll update it, and the farmer just uses it then. Uh, so um, in a positive site, though, uh, most of these equipment do get yearly updates from the vendors. The vendors spoke to a lot of them have very good control over being able to, being able to update the devices annually or when needed to, uh, because if they need to update them, they just send an engineer out to do it. They can have that scale of being able to do that. Um, we identified engaged stakeholders, such as analytic companies and vets, who can access these farm systems and APIs uh, directly and get uh, uh, viewage over the animal's uh, safety and state. Uh, this, again, is more tax services that people have access. Uh, one thing we find a lot of is that uh, most of these farms are controlled by one desktop PC. All these different systems look into that. Uh, and that desktop PC has RDP or TeamViewer or similar, which the vendors and the engineers and various other bodies have the password to. And there'll be a single password for lots of uh, all the people inside the company. So we spoke to one vendor and they said, you know, there's people at the, the uh, supplier, people at the vendor, all have access to the password. They don't know who has that because just one shared set of credentials that go around the farm. Uh, another thing we find is that a lot of the farmers don't really see there being much issue of data being stolen from the farm. Uh, if somebody gets information about the cows, that doesn't really matter, uh, which is their view. Um, but we also may find that if the uh, attacker can influence that data, that could lead to the decisions being made by the farmer, which could harm the safety of the animal. Because uh, the two parts we want to consider here are the safety of the animals and can you harm their welfare, but also obviously the monetary income of the farmer. If you disable a milking machine, it's very hard to milk the cows uh, because you can't do that at scale with two people employed in the farm with 300 cows being milked five times a day. You just can't do it. So if there's no milking machines, uh, that'll become a problem. Uh, so we, okay, we're currently doing the interviews at the moment. We've done about three or four different farmers and we've got more lined up. Um, and we're building the test bed over the next couple of months. We're starting to get devices in. So, yeah, thank you.